our God. I adore thee, O oh, our God. We adore thee, O oh, our God. For The God who has been sustaining our homes, the God who has been sustaining our lives, the God who kept on causing us to move. I want us to just worship him. We worship and we adore you. We give you praise. We truly worship you. We adore you, Lord. We ascribe greatness to you. We ascribe dominion unto you, Lord. For there is no one like unto you, the most powerful God, the almighty God. Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shama, Alpha and Omega. You that know everything, nothing is hidden away from you. We have come to worship you this morning. We have come to exalt you. We have come to say, Lord, we adore you. We ascribe greatness to you. Immortal, invisible, the only true wise God. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Father, receive our thanks. Receive our praises. Receive our worship. We say, hallowed be your name. Let your kingdom continue to manifest in our world. Let your kingdom gain establishment, gain root, even in the universe. Father, we say thank you. Thank you, Father, for ruling in our fears. Thank you for ruling in our homes thank you for having your strong saying in our homes father we give you praise receive a heart of gratitude this morning in jesus mighty name we have prayed Amen. we want to start praying for our families again and i would like to take the first word from the book of first peter chapter 3 verse 7 first peter chapter 3 verse 7 we would like to borrow some words from that scripture and use it to address and to, to, to approach our God. It says, Husbands, likewise, dwell with, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and being hears he together of the grace of life, that your prayer may not be hindered want to pray for understanding and you agree with me that it's not only the husbands alone that need understanding the wife need understanding the children need understanding we want to pray that the lord will give understanding to husbands the understanding of who this will uh, this woman is some people they, their own understanding is that women are just punching bags but if god give them the correct understanding of the woman you are living with then you will be able, your behavior will be different. If God give you correct understanding of the man you are living with as husband, your understand, I mean, your behavior will be different. When God gave understanding to, to Mary the virgin about the baby she carries in her womb, the Bible said she tread carefully. We are going to pray for understanding. We will pray for all, all, all husbands now that God will give our husband's clear understanding of who we are. Can we begin to pray in the name of Jesus? And if you are a husband, you are hearing me right now, begin to pray and say, Lord, give me understanding of who my wife is. The gift and the bundle that you have packed together and you have given to me as a, as a wife. Father, I'm praying to God. And if you are a wife, begin to pray that the Lord will give you understanding of who your husband is. Father, I ask, oh God, for a further understanding of who my husband is what you have packaged in him that i may be able to see him beyond the natural i may be able to know him and see him the way you see him 
Lord, my understanding of him will be your kind of understanding. And I pray for every man that is hearing me right now. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will give you the clear understanding of who your wife is. My husband will also have understanding of who I am in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, give everyone good and clear understanding in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, we ask for understanding this morning. Is one of the strongest pillars that will make a home to run well. Father, give my husband understanding of who I am. Give every husband understanding of who their wives are. Let them understand, let them be able to accept it in the name of Jesus. Father, if they deal, if, if we deal in any lack of understanding, our prayers will be hindered according to that scripture. We don't want our prayers to be hindered. Therefore, Lord, give us correct understanding of our spouses. Give us correct understanding of who we are. Give us correct understanding of the kind of home you are, you request us to build. That we'll be able to build a right. Give us understanding, Lord. Under, understanding of the process. Understanding of the future you are building for us. It was because Jesus had the understanding of the crown that he was fighting for. And that was the reason he, he endured the death of the cross. Lord, give us understanding of what you are building. What you are building through my home, what you are building through our homes in the mighty name of Jesus and help us to build accordingly. Thank you, Father, for hearing us in Jesus' mighty name we pray. We are still also praying about this matter of understanding. The Bible said, said to Joseph, he said, and you shall call him, you shall call him Jesus because he will save his people from his sin. Meaning that right from the time he was in the womb, the understanding of who he will be, what he's going to do, had come unto, unto, unto his parents. The same thing with Samson. He said he will be a Nazarene. You must not touch him. That is an understanding. Can we begin to pray? As many children that has come through our home, Lord, give us further understanding of who these children are. We know, Lord, that they are not just ordinary. They are not common children. Therefore, Lord, give us correct understanding of all individual children that you have battered even through us in the mighty name of Jesus. Every child you have brought under our over oversight, give us correct understanding of who they are, what they are, what you want to use them for, their purpose for life in the mighty name of Jesus so that we will not hinder them. Even in our cancer, it will not hinder them. Oh God, in our guidance, will not hinder them. Oh God, give us understanding. Understanding, oh God. Understanding of, of what, how to order the life of the children you have given. Even given unto us in the name of Jesus. We ask and request for understanding. Oh Lord, give us clear understanding. If only we know. If only we understand. If only your light can be shining into our hearts, we'll be able to comprehend what you are doing. We'll be able to move in line with you in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask for understanding of our first born, understanding of the second born, understanding of the third born, understanding of the fourth born, understanding of each and every life that you have brought even through us. Father, give us that we might be able to live accordingly. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We also want to pray for understanding. Do you know you are running your home any way, the way you like it because you, do, you, don't, you don't have the correct picture of what God is actually driving at, the purpose for which God raised your home. Some of us actually thought we are the only reason why God raised that home. God didn't raise that home because of you alone. He raised that home in order for him to take pleasure. He raised that home. There is something he wants to accomplish. Can you begin to pray? Lord, perhaps I have lost the sight of the reason why you raised my home. Oh Lord, give me understanding. I need understanding of the reason why you brought me and my husband together. I need understanding why you are building us the way you are building us. Father, give us further understanding. Father, understand, oh God, of the pop of your purpose for our home. Yea, Father, understanding of your counsel and your will for our home. Father, give us understanding. We need this understanding. Because without, your under, without this full understanding, Father, we will run the way we like and we may not get the results you are looking for. We ask, oh God, 
Give us correct understanding. That we might see as you see. That we might build as you build. That we might run as you run. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, give us understanding. We ask for understanding. In the name of Jesus. Understanding of your purpose for our home. Understanding, oh God, of your process. Understanding of the future. Understanding of what you are actually aiming at. Father, so that we might come in line with what is in your mind. We receive understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. We want to pray also that God himself will build this kind of love in, in our homes. The kind of love. You know, there are several sensual loves. There are sexual, emotional love. They are all good. But there is this eternal, unconditional love that God will expect in every Christian home. Can we begin to pray that every member of our home will be committed to building the God kind of love in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, King of glory, that in my household, my husband will be committed to building the kind of love God is looking for in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we shall go beyond sensuality. We shall tap into the heart of Jesus, collecting the kind of love she ha he has and we'll begin to run with it in my house. We'll begin to run with it in our homes. We'll begin to run with it in the name of Jesus. That unconditional love, that eternal love, that love that stays with you through thick and thin, that love that does not back out, that love that brings out your beauty, that love that empty you of negativity and bring you even to positivity, that love that gives you courage. Father, let it be, oh God, in my home, in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it be seen, let it be felt, let it be, let it be vivid in the name of Jesus. Can we begin to pray for harmony, that love, the Lord God Almighty will cause true and thorough harmony, unity in every home. Father, in the name of Jesus, husband and wife will not be at loggerheads anymore. Oh, children will not be scattered. Father, we pray for harmony. We pray for unity. We pray for God to unite our heart together that we might operate in one speech, in one language, that we might operate even in one spirit, even in our homes in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray. Can you begin to pray that every member of your family will love the Lord? Every member. The head of the home will love the Lord. The mother of the home will love the Lord. Each child will love the Lord. Father, we pray that every member of my family will love you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that my husband will love the Lord. I will love the Lord. My children will love the Lord. Our love for God will not reduce. It shall continue in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. I want us to pray. For friends and relatives that are surrounding us, they will be, pro they will be, they will be added profit to us. They will not, they will not walk contrary to our home. Can we begin to pray in the name of Jesus? I pray, oh God, I pray of my friends. I pray of for the, our family friends. Father, there will not be negative influence in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, concerning my relative, the relative of my spouse. Father, Lord, that there will be positive influence in our homes in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray against every war that relatives used to raise. It shall not have a place in our homes in the name of Jesus. Our home, oh God. We affect them for good in the name of Jesus. And our home will stand as example and whet their appetite for Christian home in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, the Bible says, iron sharpeneth iron. Therefore, our friends will indeed enhance the love of God in our home in the name of Jesus. Our families will support our home to love the Lord in the name of Jesus. They will not be negative influence. They will not be negative influence. We pray that our relationship with them will be profitable. It will be profitable unto us. It will be profitable unto them in the name of Jesus. Our, fa our marriage will not scatter our family in the mighty name of Jesus. Our, fam our marriage will be the ground that, that, that will rally all the family together and make us focus on serving the Lord, even all together in the mighty name of Jesus. Can you begin to pray for the business of your family? I don't know what your family is doing presently. Is there a business 
conception that you have conceived. Can you begin to pray? The Bible says anything you lay your hand upon will prosper. Therefore, I pray for the business the Lord has committed into our hands. Let it begin to prosper. Let it begin to yield fruit. Let it begin to, let, Father, take us to the realm of harvest in the mighty name of Jesus. Can you begin to pray for breakthrough financially for your family? Oh, it is true that the Bible says the poor shall not shall, shall not cease in the land, but minus my own my, my minus my own family. Father, Lord, I will my family will not be among them that will be poor. Father, I pray for financial financial intelligence, even for, for our family, in the mighty name of Jesus. Can you begin to pray for security? Pray for safety that you, you and your family, you will dwell in secured abode. The presence of the Lord will, will keep watch over you in the name of Jesus. I pray for my family, wherever we are, we'll be safe, we'll be secured in the name of Jesus. Father, the presence of the Lord will take, will, will be jealous over our lives in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you, we bless you because we dwell under your own canopy and we are preserved and we are secured in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. Ah, Father, we thank you. We worship you. We know you, you always hear us. And therefore, Lord, as we go even deeper, even in today's service, you will encounter every life. Father, we receive garments of praise and worship as we enter your presence with thanksgiving. In Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. Father, we worship your name. We give you glory because you are God. We thank you for how you have been with us. Blessed be your name. Let's worship the Most High God. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the Almighty God. None can be likened unto him. He rules in the affairs of men. He's the institute of, of, of family. Lord, we thank you because you have been the leader of our home. You have been the helper of our homes. You have been the protector of our homes. Father, we worship you. We come to say thank you for your faithfulness of our homes, for your loving kindness of our homes. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. We thank you, O oh God, because Lord Almighty, our homes will know you. Our homes will serve you. Blessed be your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just worship him. Wave your hands to the King of glory. We magnify your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Tree. 
Jesus, maker of them all. Everywhere I go, I see you right there. In the beauty of nature, you shine all around. For you are everything, and everything is you. Precious Jesus, a wonderful wonder you are. Oh, Just breathe. 
shall take our him. O oh, perfect love of human thought transcending. Lowly we kneel in prayer before thy throne. That theirs may be, that ours may be the love which knows no ending. Our love in our home will not know any ending. In the name of Jesus. Amen. will grant us joy in our homes in Jesus name Amen. pray for the nations today we want to pray for families that are in trouble families that are tortured families that are troubled yes trouble is part of life but we're not expected to continue to live on in trouble. And we're trusting that the Lord will send his help to as many families that are troubled or that are in turbulence, even in Jesus' name. I want to read from the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse, um, to save time, verse 20. 20, 25 and 26. He said, Then his disciples came to him and awoke him and saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. But he said to them, Why are you not, why are you fearful, O little, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. We want to pray, pray great calm into every home, great calm, especially Christian homes who want to pray great calm. I want us to begin to thank God for the gift of every home, every marriages that exist. Let's begin to pray that the Lord God Almighty will bring great calm to, for every wind, every troubled home, we pray great calm. Let there be great calm, Lord. We pray great calm. Let great calmness enter into every home, every house, every marriage in the mighty name of Jesus. Especially those ones that are already bargaining for divorce. Especially those ones that each one of them is being battered. Especially those ones who are already feeling discouraged. We pray that Jesus will arise. 
It will arise in those homes and it will command great calm in the name of Jesus. We rebuke the wind. We rebuke every storm. We rebuke the steering of the sea in those homes. In the mighty name of Jesus. I will say, Lord, let it be that you will rise up. And whatever wind it is, we obey you. Even in such home in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because you will ride upon the wind and you will release your healing even upon such home in the name of Jesus. I want us to begin to pray for wounded hearts. Those who are already feeling disappointed. Those who have been cheated even in homes. Can we begin to pray for deep healing? Deep healing in their hearts. Deep healing. Deep healings for every sister, for every brother, for every wife, for every for every husband that have felt cheated in such homes that the almighty God will step into the situation. He will correct the wrong and he will bring healing, sweet healing in the name of Jesus. Can we begin to pray new wine, sweeter wine than when they began, sweeter wine than when we began, sweeter wine, sweeter wine, sweeter wine. We receive it in the name of Jesus. Wine is meant for healing. My wine is meant for sweetness. Wine is meant for pleasure. We pray it back into all of these homes in the name of Jesus. And we receive it in our, all of our homes in the name of Jesus Christ. We come every wind. We come every storm. And we say, let there be great calmness. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. We want to release one prayer concerning the pandemic, even in, across the globe. That as God begin to restore things back to normalcy, wisdom shall be given unto lead unto the leaders to do it so that there will not be a fallback. Father, we pray, O oh God, for wisdom. Wisdom, O oh God, for committees that are raised, wisdom, O oh God, for leaders to take right decision, to take right, right, a right counsel, even as God restore all things back to his normalcy. Father, we ask, O oh God that church will come back in full force. Church will come back in a dimension of revival. Church will come with full fire, burning upon our altars. Father, we say thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Everybody keep on saying famine is coming, famine will come. God is the one that has the final say. He still does miracle. Can we ask the Lord to intervene and cause surplus and make and, and turn all things around for good even for us in the name of jesus father we plead with you you will help us abort even all this negativity as our people will respond positively to solving issues to bringing solutions father you will give us inspirations you will give us insight onto what to do and what we what will do in the mighty name of Jesus, we will not partake in any famine. In the name of Jesus, you will heal the land. When you heal, you heal permanently. Heal the land, save the people, and help us, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Our Father and our God will receive calmness, great calmness, to every home that is experiencing turbulence, that is experiencing troubles, that is experiencing odds right now in the name of jesus we terminate separation we terminate divorce we bring in fresh oil and fresh wine even back to every home in the name of jesus father we are asking oh god as you begin to heal us from this pandemic we ask that you give wisdom to our leaders to take right decisions so that things will not fall back in the name of jesus you will absolutely deliver nigeria even from all troubles in Jesus' name. We give you praise, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Good morning and happy Sunday to everyone. Briefly this morning, my assignment is to talk about family earth. You agree with me that... For many of us, we've not spent longer time together like this for a long time. So the current situation has forced us to stay home. And it's an opportunity for us to use it to enhance our health. 
The purpose of God is that we remain in health, according to 3 John verse 2. Two areas I'm going to be addressing, if time permits. One is preventing harm and diseases. And two is bonding. One, preventing harm and diseases. If we must stay healthy as a family, we must be conscious of safety and be proactive about it. Our families are in different stages of development. For some of us, we are at the emerging family level, less than 10 years, and we have toddlers, children, who at this time are spending longer time at home. And some of us parents still have reasons to go out, maybe by the reason of being involved in essential services. We must be proactive and be safety conscious for these ones. By standard, there are a level of children we cannot live alone. We cancel that you don't leave a child that is less than 10 years old alone without guidance, without somebody close by. Children under this age are very curious, adventurous. The question that keeps coming to them is, if I taste this, what will happen? If I touch this, what will happen? So they must be in guided environment. We must be conscious to prevent bones, scars, falls, poisonous things. These are days we have very beautiful liquid soaps in very beautiful containers. Must prevent choking. And for us that have bathtubs, we prevent drowning. It's good as parents to be proactive for them. So make sure you tidy up home and give specific instruction to an older child, an older guider to watch over them. I must, you must provide avenue for checking in, either by calling or for those of us that we are privileged to have devices where we can monitor what goes on at home. That would be an added advantage. And for families who are old, mid-age and above, who must also be conscious of some of these things, particularly falls. Falls from heights and all that. Must be very conscious of it and prevent those things. For those of us that go out often, I've had many people, they only use safety belt because of road safety commission. It's not because of them that you are using it. It's because of you. These things are simple, but please, let's make sure we are safety conscious that we we'll practice them and uh, uh, we give specific instruction. And lastly, on safety, for some of us that we have older children, teenagers, and young adults, let's let them know safety precautions on handling electricity because they are involved in doing many of these things so that they can imbibe this safety consciousness. When we prevent them, then we are happy together. God bless us in Jesus' name. We are all safe under his arm in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The other parts of bonding, respond to his love, responds to his mercy in gratitude so as we put again our faith and our trust in the lord i would like us to respond to him in titan offering the bible says in Acts chapter 20 verse 35 it is more blessed to give than to receive it is more blessed to give than to receive abel gave he brought the best of the choicest part of his first fruit to the Lord. And the Bible says God had respect for his offering. I want you to package your offering and package your tithe today. Um, if you would like to do an online um, transfer at a time like this, the account detail is the Zenith Bank. The men of Issachar Vision Incorporated 
and the account number is 101-54-38253. 101-54-38253. Always remember, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Shall we raise this our offering? Eternal Father, we give you the praise and we give you the glory. As we give today with this understanding that offering is part of our worship and is our response and gratitude to your love, your mercy, and your goodness. We give this and our tithe. We ask you will receive it, bless it, multiply it, use it for your good, and bless us in return. This we pray and much more in Jesus' name. Please be glad given. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. We want to sing a, a song of a dedication of our families. That all that we've been hearing, we are making up our mind that both we and our families will serve the Lord. Every idol of, that we have raised, we are agreeing with God, we are tearing it down. We will not seek worthless idols. We will love our family. We will be what God wants us to be. And we will raise up our children in the fear of the Lord. And together with our family, we will serve the Lord. And we will be continuous until the day He comes. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm done building my own kingdom. Less I do like sheep, we have all gone astray. We must choose this day whom we will save. As for me and my house, we will save the Lord, we will save.
grace of God, we will see great homes, we will see great children, we will see great wives, we will see great husbands. We will be so glad to hear from you and hear your testimony of how God has bring healing into your relationship. We're spending a whole month. So this last closing week of this month is going to be so, we're going to have so much to do. Don't forget, for the singles, there's been a continual online discussion going on and questions and answers. I think we've had the third or fourth edition and it's still going to run on this week. We're going to have more of that this week. We've got quite a lot of singles who have joined in, even from other countries. That's an amazing thing. And we will do much more this week because what bothers us is slightly different from what bothers other people who are married. And of course, this week also, we will be going in for a full weekend from this Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's supposed to be the traditional family life conference. And it's going to be done online since our world is still going through a process. And then we're all going to be part of it. And I'd like you to start preparing yourself. This Wednesday, I'll be bringing in two very important couple. Very important couple because I brought in a set of couple a couple of weeks ago who had been married for 49 years and the other married for 43 years. An amazing time sharing their experiences, sharing the seasons of their life and their journey. We learned so much from them. But this Wednesday, I'm bringing a younger couple to check the differences and the learning process that goes on. And the one not too young, the other young. And we can bring them together and learn wisdom from them. So this Wednesday, we'll be hosting Pastor Shola Mene and his wife of Petrad Ministry. I thought somebody was clapping for that. Yes. He will be here with his wife and then we will have a time of interaction. We also have another couple joining them. Two families, another very beautiful couple, Dr. Ogunri Day and his wife will be joining in. These two couples we are bringing in on Wednesday have been married for 21 years. That's Pastor Sholag Mene and the Dogunri days for 11 years. So it's an amazing combination we're having this Wednesday to learn from them how did God help them and how has been the journey so far. What are the processes their marriages have been going through and what lies ahead of us. So don't forget that. For me, I'll be taking you today, Tuesday and Thursday, on the law of effective and productive marriage. Marriage is meant to be a blessing. Marriage is God's idea. Marriage is good. Life can be lonely if you are not married, largely. Though we see people who are married and yet still lonely. Marriage is an amazing design of God. And I need to make very clear that marriage was not a product of scientific research. Neither is marriage a cultural agreement. Marriage was instituted by God and only God will manage it. Only God will make it work. Because he started it, he had an idea in his mind, and if we follow his manual, we are sure no matter what season our relationship goes through, we are sure we will survive. We're sure that we will produce a great home. And that's my confidence. So today we'll check the manual again as we read from scriptures, our guiding um, scriptures, Matthew chapter 19, verse 3 to 6. Matthew 19, verse 3 to 6. We're looking at the law of effective and productive marriage. Why? Some are marriage are married, but their marriages are not effective. Some are married, but there's no productiveness. When I say being productive, I'm not talking of children alone. There is a way a lady comes into your life and you have enhanced that lady by being her husband. A man comes into your life, you have enhanced that man by being his wife. That's been productive. 
Amen? So we look at scriptures. To be effective means to be result-oriented. Running a marriage that is result-oriented. A marriage, a relationship, a companion that is very strategic. You know when you hit it. You know when you have not hit it. You are not doing relationship by chance. You're not just saying, let's see what happened. No, it's an effective relationship because there is a goal that is set that is somewhere we're going. And at the end of this year, we're going to check the result. Have we been very effective and have we been very productive? So guiding us from Matthew chapter 19 from verse 3 to 6, the Bible says, The Pharisees also came on to him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful? For a man to put away his wife for every cause on the line. For every cause. She didn't cook well, fire her. She comes late from work, divorce her. You didn't like her dressing, divorce her. For every cause. She snores when she sleeps, divorce her. She cooks late or burn the pot while cooking, divorce her. And so they came to Jesus. Don't forget the Pharisees were the highly studious group of people in the days of Jesus. They know the laws. They know everything. So they came tempting him and saying, can we put away our wives for every cause? Verse number four of Matthew chapter 19. And he answered and said unto them, have ye not read? That he which made them at the beginning made them male and female. Verse 5. And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twine shall be one flesh. Verse 6. Where we stop and then take off wisdom from these passages. Wherefore, they are no more twine, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. These are old scriptural reading in so many marriage ceremonies over the years. Let's check that verse 4 again and learn some wisdom. Number one, he says clearly, this is the answer to your question. And there are many questions about relationship today. And up to now, men are still asking questions. As I'm sharing with you today, I'd like you to keep standing in your questions because it is he that asks that receive. People get confused, take wrong decisions, destroy their relationship because they didn't ask enough questions. So whichever, however mischievous the intentions of the question in verse 3 is, an answer has come. And I'm praying for you that every question around your relationship, answers will come. Amen. It's so important to get answers. If we don't get it, we can multiply our failure. We can multiply our confusions. We can take wrong the tour and raise younger couples to do the same wrong. So answer came. And he gave the answer and said, have you not read? So the first cure to having a very good, effective marriage is knowledge. Reading. Reading. Have you not read? Not reading many books on relationship alone, as good as that is, but reading the manual of the man who started marriage. Have you not read? If you had knowledge, if you have read enough from the Bible to see the essence and purpose of marriage, that question wouldn't have arise. The thought of divorce wouldn't have arise at all. Don't forget the question was how to put away our wives. I'm saying to you by the grace of God, your marriage won't fail. Amen. But that was the question. How to put away our wives? And the only way People think about putting away their wives is a sign of lack of knowledge. So any man who ever embraces divorce process is ignorant. Say, so have you not read? If you read, you won't think divorce. You won't plan divorce. But if you have not read, 
you will think I'm tired of this lady. I think I'm just out of this marriage. Relationship is not a paperwork. They just walk away from or walk into. That's not relationship. Relationship is life. A whole life is being attached to your life. May you not mismanage life. So have you not read? Knowledge will save your marriage from divorce. Have you not read? If you read, you will know how to handle a woman. You will know how to handle a man. You know how to handle your children. All about these are full in the pages of scriptures. How to treat your spouse. How to treat your children. How to handle your finances. We have so much quarrel over finance in home today. All because we have not read. If we have read the word of God. The manual of the man that began marriage. The money won't be an issue. Sex won't be an issue. Many things we complain about won't be an issue. Because if we read it, the answers are there. Even before you get married. They say, now, part of the things we need to read, Jesus began to explain them. He says, one, that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female. Hear me. If you can understand this, repeat it after me if you can also. Being a male, Be a male. Or, a or a female is a function of birth. Function of birth. Being a real man a real and a great woman is a function of choice. So you can be a male and not be a man. You can be a female and not be a great lady. Being a male is a function of birth. You didn't decide that. You were just born and they say, what was the sex? It says a male child. Say, praise God. She was born. Say, what's the sex? Oh, it's a female. Oh, he gave us a girl again. May God have mercy on you. Because you can't give anything. May you celebrate what God gives you. They check the sex. Oh, she's a female. You got nothing to do with that. You can't change that. So I see some men trying to become a woman. You are just less than a real person. I see some ladies trying to become a man. Say he has a masculine voice. He walks like a man. Something has gone wrong in the chemistry of your body. He who made them from the beginning made them male and female and gave you no option to make a choice of you. Either you want to be a male or a female. I believe in today's world, if the options exist, so many ladies would like to be a male. They just felt the male counterpart are too oppressive. And they like to be a man at least for one quarter. But it's so painful that arrangement does not exist. Is that okay? <laughs> I wish it does, but it doesn't exist. So just celebrate being a man. Or being a male rather. And celebrate being a female. There can be an alternative to you. You got your place. And may you feel your place. So celebrate being a female. Don't feel marginalized because you're a female. Celebrate being a man. Don't be a weak man. Be a strong male. Now becoming a man, you've got to choose that. There are too many males that are not men enough. Becoming a great female by becoming a woman it's your choice. So it's a function of choice. So you can choose to be a great person. I don't know what choice you would like to make. You'd like to make a choice to just remain a regular male or to become a real man. You've got to make that choice. A regular female or to become a real great lady that cannot be ignored among her equal. You've got to make that choice. You've spoken about choice before now. We make choice every day. So that's one choice to make today. So it says, in the beginning, if you have read, he didn't make them male and male. He didn't make them female and female. So there's nothing called same-sex marriage from the manual of the beginning. 
It was when men failed, they started thinking of a way to redesign the marriage. But every time you're going to have a machine that will last its lifespan, you must be committed to the manual. And the marriage manual is between a male and a female. If you feel you, as a lady, you feel like being a man, somebody had corrupted, there's a virus in your body. Somebody had corrupted you. You need a vaccine. Not the type being proposed now. You need a vaccine from the manual of the word of God to correct that anomalies. So it's not God never wired a lady to become a man. It will be a wrong connection. So if you are desiring to change your sex, think again. Because he who made the marriage in the beginning, male them male for reason of birth, made them female for reason of birth, and the male becomes a great man for reason of choice, the lady becomes a great female for reason of choice. So make a wise choice to grow your life as God had wired you. Don't change the cabling, it might spark along the way. Number two lessons from that scriptures. Verse four. It says he made them at the beginning. Now beginning talks about foundation. Talk about when the process started. Is that okay? And once you don't change the process, you can predict the end result. Is that okay? So celebrate who God made you. Don't make effort to change the process. Are you a lady? Celebrate being a lady. Don't feel oppressed. Don't feel marginalized. Are you a man? Celebrate being a man. So in the beginning, the process God made was for a male and a female, a man and a woman. And look at verse 5, painted it more clearly and deeper in verse number 5 of Matthew 19. And said, for this cause, when you see the word cause, talk about reasons. There's a reason he didn't make male male or female female. Did you understand that? There's a reason for this cause. There's a reason for your union. There's a reason in the mind of God that uh, and allows you to marry that lady you marry or marry that man you marry. You must find the reason so you can fulfill purpose. For this cause. And if this union is going to work, the first counsel of God is for you to leave and cleave. Now he said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, his wife, and they twine shall be one flesh. Give me that in message translation of Matthew 19 verse 5. See the way the message put it. And because of this, a man leaves father and mother and is firmly bonded to his wife. I love the phrase firmly. So bonded that nobody can come in between. Firmly the father and mother cannot interfere. Firmly the friends cannot threaten or interfere. Firmly bonded to his wife. Becoming one flesh, no longer two bodies, but one. Few thought. Thought number one. Any man who cannot leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife is not qualified to marry. You've got no business getting married if you are still a mommy's boy at 31. The disappointment to real men. He asks you to leave does not imply to deny. 
leaving your father and mother to hold on to your wife does not mean denying your father and mother, but it means that their decision-making process over you is now largely controlled. Why? Relationship or marriage is not for boys, it's for men. Boys are highly dependent. Girls are highly dependent. They feel a little discomfort, they raise a lamb. They get hungry, they start a third world war. That's what happened when people are still learning the process. Is that okay? Now, that's what happened to being a child or being either a young boy or a young lady. You raise a lamb on everything. On everything. You don't let things go. I know something with a young boy or a young man. They, a young lady, they exaggerate everything. They raise red flag on everything. So marriage is not for boys. And being a boy does not mean you are 19 years. That's, what I, that's not what I mean. You can be 45 years and be boyish in your mind. Did you get my thought? You can be 30 years lady and be so girlish in your behavior. No sense of maturity, no sense of discipline, no capacity for sacrifice, and every little pressure can destabilize you. So when we say marriage is not for boys, I'm not saying in terms of age, until 19 years old, or is too young to get married. We've seen young men at 19 with a mature mind of 45. They can handle relationship. They can handle a lady very maturely well. They can bring the best out of that lady. So it's not a function of natural age I'm talking about. It's a function of your mind age. How mature are you in your mind? How much things can you handle? And you don't get destabilized. Get confused. And the whole world must come down. So therefore... A man, if you are man enough, you must leave your father and your mother. My wife knows this case. A young man, they serve together. Can you imagine? So the man should be in his 50s now. They serve together. They were colleagues. And because I'm a preacher, my wife brought this guy and his fiancée to me. They became close to us. And I was doing a counseling for them. They were preparing for marriage. Two weeks to the wedding, they came for their final sessions of counseling. And I did ask, so have you got an accommodation where you put this beautiful lady? I said, yes, yes, yes. Have you paid? He said, no. You don't have the money? He said, no, we have the money. Why have you not paid? He says, I want to take my mother to also see the place. And if she likes it, then I will pay. After the lady you want to marry likes the place, it has been waiting for you to pay, you are still waiting for your mother. So I said to the lady, do you believe me? She said, yes. And that's something with some of the ladies, they can believe to an extreme point. I said, do you believe me? He said, yes. I said, you can marry this man. I broke the courtship two weeks to wedding. I got a lot of red flag calls. But the plans are in place. The cards has gone out. Everybody, we were also prepared to be in the wedding. And I told the lady, if you marry this guy, who needs to get approval from his mother before he pays for the house you've rent for marriage, then one day when you marry him, he will need to get permission from the mother to sleep with you. He will need to get permission from the mother to tell you what food to cook. You will need to get so marriage is not for mother's boys. <coughs> Am I well understood? Oh, many people visited my office in that one week. How can you do that? That's too harsh. And I said to them, I'm just trying to save her future. So the news went round. I become a bad pastor, maybe. And then they didn't, that money didn't hold. Everything just, everybody went to their path. Subsequently, they got married to separate individuals. And they both came to meet me and said, thank you 
for breaking that courtship. It is when you took that decision that being a man woke up in my spirit. There are too many people who are boyish and childish and all they want to do is that I will marry you. They don't even know the meaning of I will marry you. They don't know the responsibility that goes with marriage. They just look around and say, you look good. I think you'll be a wife materia. What's the... People need to sow what is called materia. Anytime you buy a materia, you need somebody to design it. So are you man enough to design this wife materia and produce that materia of a good wife? Are you following the scriptural positions? So, if you can leave your father, if everything happened in your marriage, one minute you have called your father, Daddy, please come and talk to my wife. I don't know why she's behaving like this. You are fired. If anything happened, you call a family meeting on your wife, say, Ewabami Basoro, come and help me talk with her. And they put her in the middle and they are tongue lashing your wife. You are a mistaken husband. You should not marry. And we have too many strange guys who are already married. So we're looking at the remedy, how to deal with it. If at every point, if at every point of your relationship, you call your friend to come talk to your wife for you, you call your mother to come talk to your wife, it is people outside telling you, this is what to do to your wife. This is how to lead your wife. Then you have mistakenly married. You are still a boy. You got no business leading another life. You have no idea who you are leading. Let me paint the person you are leading to you. A little beautiful girl whose parents paid tuitions all through primary school, secondary school, university. They watch her go to serve. They work hard to get a job for her. And she's looking like a woman with a great future. You don't want to put such a life and such worth of investment into a boy's hand as husband who does not know where he's going. He does not know how to take decision. He's not, even his decision is one-sided. It's all about himself, 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 himself. Selfish men don't run good homes. All they think about is himself. Once he is good, everybody else can go to anywhere. They doesn't care. So everybody exists for him alone. That is a selfishness in a childish husband. Very boyish. It's his friend that teaches him. You mean your wife is behaving that way? Ah, you don't slap her once. Ah, she will settle down. And then you're coming home, flexing your muzzle. Just try it one more time. I have been told how to treat people like you. You're a boyish husband. Painful enough. We have too many boyish husbands today. That's why divorce is becoming popular. Because, you see, a man who does not have tenacity, you don't have capacity to go through process, when the going gets tough, you will bend. So we have too many young people in marriage thinking divorce. That's why today you have a marriage of 72 hours broken. Because the guy's idea was just a lot of fantasy and for some people, all the drive is sex. I just love that girl. I'm going to marry her. She will be a good girl in bed. Now the bed is rough. <laughs> Did you hear me? Now what? The bed is rough. Now what next? You got no preparation. You got no plan. You just got a rough bed. You will soon know that sex does not guarantee a very effective marriage. If sex is a proof of love, if sex is a proof of love, then the sex hawkers will be the greatest lover on earth. They have sex every day. But, and yet they still commit suicide. Sex is not the proof of love. If you love somebody, it doesn't have to be a sex thing. Sex is not a proof of love. Yes, there is sex in love. Did you get the other side of it? Sex is a lubricant in love. You know what you, you want to call a lubricant? It oils your intimacy. 
It oils it. But sex is not really what is called love. Check love in 1 Corinthians 13. Love suffers long. Love endures. Love can bear. So when under little pressure you walk out of relationship, it raises questions on your love. Did you get that? After little pressure, you're done. Just explain how much you love. Love is not really the fantasy of wanting to hold you, wanting to do. That's not love. Love has been there. Love has been a pillar. Love has been a defense. Love is the enduring capacity. Yes, you married this guy. Things are rough now. Things won't always be rough. Endure with him. Go through the bad weather. Another good weather will come. Check it. Do you really love? Think about that. Did you get it? Do you really love? All you call love is just what is mine? What do I enjoy? So can I keep getting what I enjoy? No. At times love means cutting yourself. Who understand that English? <laughs> yes. Love. Okay, I do hope we will have time to deal with this more on Tuesday. But I have questions coming in already and our time is running. And all I've just done is an introduction. We've not gotten to the... I have five laws. And the first law is the law of, the law of priority. If your marriage is going to be effective and productive. The second one is the law of pursuit. The third one, which is I'm just waiting to get there, is the law of intimacy. Too many couples who are married are not intimate. And now we have the law of influence. All this we will deal with this week. Then the law of money. We got too many questions about money. The last session we had. Listen, if you understand how money runs in relationship, your approach and disposition will be totally different. And the big one, the law of forgiveness. We'll be looking at all of these. And if time permits, and if it doesn't permit, get the series and get the book that is coming out with this theme. Wookie Trust for Healthy Relationship. But sufficient today is to consider the introduction that we have. I have a question here. It says, how do you handle a relationship in which the groom's mother keeps telling him that you cannot trust a Yoruba girl? wholeheartedly. Groom is from south-south while the wife is from southwest. That's just what I have just talked about. Any such husbands that goes back to the mother and believe the mother's feeble reports about other culture and other people in other parts of the world, that is a sign that man is still a boy husband. As a married man to a lady from another part of the world or another part of Nigeria, for ex which is the case here, you must count your cost. I have so many of my friends who marry from eastern Nigeria. They are Yoruba people, but they marry Igbo. And pay the heavy, heavy dowry because it's not cheap to marry an Igbo lady. Very expensive. So if they were not rich enough and strong enough. They won't go for an Igbo lady. Because it's not cheap to marry an Igbo lady. And they are doing very well. They are doing very well in their marriage. You won't even know the difference. Except anybody tells you. Now, the same mother who is trying to interfere in your marriage and create doubt in your heart against your wife and make you very suspicious of your wife, that same mother, if you have married somebody from America who is an American citizen, he won't tell you not to trust. He said, now nah, if you marry, we will all become American. Oh yeah, quick, 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 marry. That's the selfishness in human beings. The same mother who is advocating against a section of this country if the same guy, if he's not yet married, now get engaged 
to the Senate president's daughter, who is from northern Nigeria, he will say it's the will of God. It is the evil in a man's heart. That's why at times love is tested when you have to make choice. Love is tested when you have to make a choice. Some people are in certain relationship today because they don't have a choice. If they have a choice, they will walk out of it. They will walk out of it. Some young men are in courtship today because they are just managing the choice available. If they have a plan B, they will never marry that girl or never marry that guy. But since there is no plan B, let's push on, let's manage on. Please don't manage a life into marriage. It's a long journey. Your management skill will soon be tested and it may fail. Don't manage it. It could be painful. Don't manage it. I've always desired that I wish marriage is for one week. Then we tell everybody, try it. After one week, we'll be out of here. But marriage is for life. Even if you claim to divorce, if you choose that option, you are still married because the scare of divorce will haunt your life till you die. So you see that man? He's in his second marriage. You see that man? That's the challenge we have here. I got another question here. It says, he kept emphasizing that it is not good for couples to say, my money, my money. How can a woman handle a man that has no savings. He doesn't give wife pocket money for her upkeep and rests. Only house food money. That's what he gives. And the wife goes out to work and make money to save for future use and husband says borrow me. So is daddy saying don't collect back simply because it's our money? I didn't say that. And if you understand the teaching, I never said that. Number two, it is the sole responsibility of a man to provide for his house. Yeah. It is sole responsibility. That's why you don't marry a man that doesn't have a job. It's not cheap to maintain a woman. Real wives are not cheap to maintain. Very, very expensive. And bless is any man who can take care of them well. No lady gets old in the hand of a caring husband. Did you hear me? No lady gets old in the hand of a caring husband. If your wife is looking older than her age, we need to check your management skill. You are likely a bad manager. So think about this. So I'm not saying the man should not. Every real man is a provider. He provides for his house. He provides for his children. He provides for everybody. Very, very important to note. Everybody is a provider. Every man is a provider. Is that okay? So I have never said the man should be irresponsible. No. What I have taught you is that if you can share your body with your husband, why not share your resources and everything that you have? Share them. It makes all the difference. Do you have any other question? Any other question? Okay. Now, so send it in. If you have questions, let them keep coming in. But so sufficient today is to look at the introduction we had on this teaching of the law of effective and productive marriage. All we have achieved this morning service is the introduction on this. Looking at Jesus and the question that was asked him, do you put away your wife for everything, every offense she caused? No. Now, in closing with that question on finance, what do you do? Number one, if your husband says, borrow me, and you borrowed him, it is honor and integrity for your husband to pay back. If he didn't pay back, he has lost the credibility to be credit worthy. 
That's number one. Number two, if he's leave the whole financial responsibility of the house to you alone because you are also working and he is working but live as though nothing concerns him, then it is very, very important you both see a counselor. I will be available to counsel you if you are willing to get in touch with me. It's not a difficult thing. At times, men behave that way because of their background. They are coming from a background where their own father never provided anything for the entire house. The wives work, everybody labor to take care of their children. And now in this modern world, with all the knowledge available, the same man wants to practice the same thing. We must stop that practice because it's not productive, it's not effective for a healthy family life. So it's very critical to know that. So tomorrow on Tuesday, I will continue with this teaching, the law of effective and productive marriage on Tuesday. On Wednesday, don't forget that we'll be hosting Dr. Babaji Day, Ogunri Day, and Pastor Shola Mene. 4.30, 4.30 Nigerian time on Wednesday. We will learn so much from these two couples coming together. We want to thank those who joined today's service from Nigeria, from Netherlands, from Ghana, from Liberia, from South Africa, from Morocco, from India, from Gambia, and other countries that I don't have the list coming up yet. We want to thank you. I'd like you to invite everybody that you know, let's come together for this by Tuesday, 5 o'clock Nigerian time, one hour on Tuesday, we'll continue on this law of effective and productive marriage. My prayer is that your marriage will be productive, your marriage will be effective. Don't miss this series. You will be glad you went through it. The Lord bless and keep you strong and the Lord defend your territory. The Lord bring peace to your home. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. So much pain from the choices that we have made. So much we will change. Oh, but help us wonder if it's too late. There's a truth that just might save us. True.